We'll come to that later. <laughs> so what about that saltash then? No, that's absolutely fantastic. We um, popped down and found those brass bands that we have been talking about. And they're off the powder cakes, weren't they? That's right, yeah. So we both went in and had a little dive and um, Robert was filming it. Uh, we went along and found the bands where they obviously where they were laying there, we knew where they were. And um, and broad arrows on. Excellent. And broad arrows mean? It's HMS. HMS Saltash. Can only be really, there's nothing else out there. No. So no. yeah. No, it it up. You know, we was always wondering if it was. We thought it was, but that, that really sort of confirms it, doesn't it? Yeah, it did. It's great. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, I think that's a really, really, really good result. Yeah. You know, we've left everything down there, no impact on the wreck whatsoever, and we've got the information that we needed. Oh, we're just coming up on one of the bands now. Uh, it was thanks to Becky and Dan Pascoe who pointed out that we should be looking for the broad arrow mark on the bands and that they were probably from the powder kegs. Uh, Dan and a team of maritime archaeologists have found a lot on the wreck of the HMS Invincible. Uh, that was a ship that ran aground in 1758. And that's it there, Dan was just pointing it out, the broad arrow on the side. There's another one just coming into view. See part of the wreck there as well, part of the uh, wooden structure. There's an arrow just where it joins there. Doesn't show up very clear on this picture, but I think there's another one on this, uh, another one on this bandit you're about to point out. Yeah, you can just about see it there. Uh, the broad arrow or crow's foot ordnance mark has been used on British Army equipment since at least 1553 and it was a way of determining if everyday items are civilian or of a military origin. Well, as well as ongoing boat maintenance and unpredictable weather, we've also got uh, the May Bloom to deal with. That's why we've got all these blizzard conditions down there. It's starting to clear a bit now as we head into June. But the tide didn't seem to slack off either this day, so it's all a bit challenging down there. But we got some measurements, got what we wanted. What we do want to do on this site when the visibility improves is to do photogrammetry. Uh, we worked alongside Wessex Archaeology on another site, and because they are keen to help uh, sort of budding, very amateur archaeologists like us. They were good enough to add, add me to their Agisoft license so I can use the software. Paolo from Wessex went through it with me and we're quite keen to give it a go. And what photogrammetry is, is creating 3D images. So you swim around a site taking overlapping pictures from as many viewpoints as possible to create a photo mosaic which you then feed it into Agisoft which then creates a three-dimensional view. So rather than seeing parts of a wreck on a video, and for the most part, UK diving videos are monumentally dull to watch due to the limited visibility, uh, you'll be able to view a wreck in its entirety and virtually swim around it. Well, when we do come to take these pictures, uh, I think it'll have to be leap tides, good viz. Uh, we're also thinking about laying a reference line down there to make things as easy as possible. And I really need Jamie to get his finger out and get a move on because I've absolutely run out of anything to say on this video. So good. What's going on then? Well, I think we're doing remarkably well. Um, we've come from Beachy Head almost to Cookmere Haven on one red stripe. Yeah. Well, we've got six red stripes remaining. That um, should get us back to port, yeah, right? I think we should it? be alright with that. Yeah. Uh, 
Well, it's about now we start calling into question Jim's chemical metal fix on the steering, which at this point has now completely failed. Um, it wasn't your repair, Jim. I actually put a bushing in upside down, which allowed two bolts to come loose. Uh, but uh, as you both watch me fit it, it can't all be my fault, can it? Is that why we've got two ropes around the, uh, the leg? Yeah, I'm trying and to. Put on the top of it. Yeah. We had to like <laughs> tie it up to keep it as central as much as possible, and then just with a little bit of bit of fancy footwork, me manoeuvring us left and right, and we just sort of just chugging back nice and slow. Yeah, autopilot. Well, safe's calling the lifeboat out. Yeah, yeah, didn't that? Safe's calling the lifeboat out. Yeah. I think we can do it. Yeah, adapt and overcome. So. <laughs> Yeah, good job it's not rough out here either. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think it's your fault because you was ever helped. My fault, was it? Broke it. Yeah, well, <laughs> it was a bit rough on the way out here. Yeah. <laughs> it take off a couple of times. Yeah, oh well. Still, the salt ash makes up for it. Yeah, that's really good. Really good result. Excellent. Well. Another couple of hours, we'll be back at port. What a lovely afternoon. Oh, cheers, Rob. Well, making our way back up into the harbour. Lovely day for it. But, um, oh, then you're doing very well. Helming the boat. Let's go and have a look. How's the helming going, Rob? <laughs> yeah, it's all right. It's just, uh, it's going to get quite excited when we get into the bird, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Could be a laugh, couldn't it? It's always going to happen. Yeah. More red stripe needed. Yeah. Proper lash up. <laughs> Look at that. Work, mate. Cheers. Yes. A bit more boat maintenance. Yeah, it's all back together again by two bolts, but that's, that's no great shakes. Did find a little bit more information out about the salt ash. I'd say we're 99% certain that's what it is, because there's nothing else in that area that's well known that it's sunk, that we know yeah. of. Yeah. That's pretty good, isn't it? Oh, oh, finding a bit of Brilliant. history, yeah, finding a bit of history down oh, there. Fantastic. So. Well, not in the light of day since 1746. Yeah, uh, it's under the command of John Pittman. Uh, he'd taken just previously, he'd taken a few uh, French privateers, three French privateers. Oh, trois. Yeah, uh, and then it was chasing another one, wasn't it? It was another French privateer, and then in a squall, it capsized. It did when have you... a lot of, for a small ship. It had a lot of people on it. it had a complement of 110. 110. Wasn't it? There's a lot of people on a yeah. 26 meter ship, isn't it? Yeah, and if you've taken taken three prizes, then you put uh, some of your uh, some of your men on board, uh, proper officers, etc. <coughs> um, keep an eye on the, on the Frenchmen, make sure they don't break out and be a pain. And whether you would then take their captain on board and some of their crew to uh, obviously you're, you're losing men all the time. So having having done taken three vessels, you have probably lost quite a few men. Mm. Uh, and, and if you're taking some of the Frenchmen in to help you on board your ship because you're short-handed. Whether things didn't quite happen quickly enough or well enough. Got all the sails out, coming yeah. around Beachy Head as we well know, it can get a bit... A bit sporty around there, yeah, can't it? Yeah, yeah. Got wind against tide, it really will kick up. And the position that that wreck is, it's, it is reasonably close, isn't it? It is, so that, yeah. If it does kick up in a squall, then yeah, yeah mm -hmm. you, you could be in trouble, so short-handed. Uh, 14 four-pounders, yeah, 14, and 14 swivel guns, 14 wasn't swivel there? guns, yeah. Yeah, we don't... There might be one swivel gun, but we can't see any swivel guns on site. But like we were sort of talking, that if the, the vessel's gone over, they only sit on top of the gunnels <coughs> um, on a stem, so they'll be slotted in. So if it goes over, they'll be first to go. Yeah. Um, and obviously being a timber hull, there are probably air pockets in there, and it could go for miles in the tide, couldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so we don't know where we're going with it next. Um, if you find something underwater, you report it to the RO. ROW, the receiver of wreck. Yep. Uh, but if it's an HMS ship, then it, it's different rules. You've got to go yeah, to it the goes to the MOD, isn't it? MOD, yeah. Yep. And it's up to them what they 
what yeah. they decide they want to do with it. Our interest in it is it's we're, we're with naming it always. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've yeah. done as much as we can with it. Really, it's only yeah. a small wreck. It's not something we want to waste a lot more, no. much more time and much more diving on it. But, but you know, like we say, it's it was a wreck with no history. Yeah. A wreck with no name has no, no, no history. Name, but now it's named and it has a history, yeah. so we're you know we're really pleased with that. On to different things now. Yes, pasture's on. new. So what else? See so what else hot. we can get up to. And, uh, <laughs> got one called Jam Hot. We've had two goes at it and we haven't had a lot of luck. No. So third time lucky and go down and see what that is. Hope so. Yeah. What are we gonna do if there's a load of cannons on that one? <laughs> Come on, go cannon crazy. Yeah. Gold, that's what we've got. Gold, gold, gold. gold. Shows of gold. Hopefully that'll be, be next weekend. The boat's good. It's like wood. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we're good to go, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah.